you, Pens- fuck you, fuck, fuck you, Pen- the total number of deaths in Democratic from that error is less than 30,000 people and 173,000, more like 200,000 if you go by excess morbidity, are dead. Most 15% it, of the dead it, are it, it, the Democratic it, governors had a part of. But it Trump turns out, it turns out that they, it, dead people, it turns out, it, Rick, it turns out that the, they undercounted the number so that they would look better. It turns out that most of the deaths that New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, uh, these were the places where there, the, the nine biggest death rates were in, of 10 were in Democrat states. The four biggest states were Democrat states, and they all decided to put old people into these, uh, uh, with COVID into these rest homes and they lied about the numbers of people that died. Yes, yeah, so it they turns fucked out up in the 30,000, 30,000. No, 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 it would have been 60,000. Not fucking, no, because you're full of shit. It wouldn't have been 60,000. It would have been 30,000, and that's roughly 15% of all the COVID dead. So you're going to you're gonna nail the Democratic governors for their fuck-up, but you're going to let no, Trump no, off actually, the hook. You're gonna let, go further. No, fuck I'm you. Gonna you're going to let go Trump further, off yeah. the hook for 200,000 yeah, dead. I, I, for 1,000 dead, 1,000 go. dead still dying every day. Okay. Everybody knows okay. to shield the old people. We're still losing 1,000 people a day. I know, and it's your 200, fault. 200,000 200, by uh, the I, you, you got to stop talking. You got to stop talking. It is Biden that said that we should not have embargoed China. Biden's not Biden, fucking president. Biden, you fucking asshole. Biden, wanted, Biden is not Biden president. Wanted, you dick. Biden, Trump is president. Biden, Trump is Rick, the one Rick, who fucked it if up. If we had listened, why it was, we have if, the largest no, number of no, deaths of any country in the world by I far? I can't talk if you're going to keep talking. You can't. I can't talk if you're going to keep talking. Keep bullshitting. No, I, you got to stop talking. Rick. You got to stop talking. Why? You because talk. you just say. I'm gonna hang up. I'm gonna hang up. Fine. I'm gonna hang up. Hang up. Fucking hang up, Lance. Hang up. We're fucking done this week. We're fucking done with your bullshit. Wait a minute. We're not done. We're not done, Rick. Because I have a question to ask you, Lance. Did did Trump do anything kind of notable this week? What are you talking about specifically? No, I'm not going to be specific. Did Trump do anything notable this week? I mean, I yeah, I'm sure he did. What? what, what, what he what visited his. Did, don't look at your. Don't look at, at the, the internet, internet from this don't computer look at the land. We're talking. Good, good. So you tell me, asking because I know you're very well informed by your media. What do you? What did, did Trump do? Anything unusual this I week? I don't know. Something you tell notable me. Notable in any way? Me. No, no, no. You tell me. I I know he visited his dying brother. Anything else? I don't know. He must have done something legislative. But no. No. So I don't know. I mean, I give, up. I give up. I give up. Okay. All right, now please don't interrupt me. It turns out that this year, that this week, sorry, Rick was shielded from the knowledge by his media that have been lying to him all along. They lied to him again this week, and some, they, somehow they prevented Rick from finding out that, Rick, that Trump signed a historic peace agreement. Oh, you mean the one between, between the U.S. Israel Union and, and the I know Arab about countries. that. Yeah, okay, Trump signed a, a, a peace agreement with, between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. Israel agreed to yes. not to settle so much on the West Bank. And the UAE agreed to not be at war with Israel. There are two countries in the UAE. It's not a small country. There are two of them, the Emirates and Dubai. And what this has done is ended 70 years of war. Well, they started the war in 48, so that would be 52, 72 years of war ended this week. What do you think of that, Rick? I think it's okay. What do you mean, okay? 
um, I didn't. You're right. I didn't pay that. I read a little bit about it. Um, okay. Let me explain what this means. Does this it mean that, that a thousand Trump people is will actually, die of COVID in America from now until election day? Rick, Rick, Trump did. Trump has created a historic peace treaty between two enemies that have been at war for 72 years. And what this has done so, so, is it has isolated the Palestinians so that now, the, now all the Arab countries that have been at war with Israel are interested in making peace. You see, it turns out that by going for what Trump's strategy was, was brilliant. Instead of trying to negotiate with the Palestinians, what he did was, is he went around them and he's trying to get any Arabs that wants peace to make peace with Israel. And what he has done is he has succeeded with two countries. This is the first time there's been a peace treaty between an Arab country and Israel in 25 years. And what this is doing is it's making all the Arab countries more likely to make peace, and it's forcing the Palestinians to become more reasonable because they're being abandoned by the, the people that were pledged to fight for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm saying is this. Trump has done something brilliant and your media made very little uh, of it because they want you to be concentrating on numbers of people dead from COVID, which aren't, which now I have to say, Rick, no one out there except for the most radical, confused, isolated Democrat believes that Trump created COVID. I don't believe that okay? he created it. It was sent to us, it was sent to us from the, from the Chinese and he's done uh, as much as anybody could short of, of creating miracle drugs and even the drugs that, that people think would work, you won't take. So I don't know what else, the guy, I think the man should be judged on things other than what you imagine he did. Luckily, about luckily COVID. for the country, he will be judged on the most immediate effects of his presidency. Whether, now you, we can argue about whether how, how responsible he is for everything, but um, I mean, it doesn't look good for the man ex unless he suppresses votes. Do you know I found out something very interesting. Did you know that the swine flu, it killed about 20,000 people. It did not. It killed 12,469 Americans. Okay, that Americans. were recorded. That were recorded. But you know what it turns out? The Obama administration told the CDC to stop counting at that number. So it turns out we don't really know how many people were killed by the swine flu because the CDC just did what the Obama administration said. They were Democrats too. Well, I don't know because I haven't read up on what that. If, what I, if do know, I do know. I do know that the number of flu. certified COVID dead in the U.S. is 12 and a half times the number of certified swine flu dead in the U.S. Yeah, and I'm and I'm telling you it's because. After um, after it hit that number, the Demo the Democrats at, uh, in the Obama administration called the Democrats at the CDC and told them to stop counting. Can you find me a so news we, source that says that? Well, I think you could. And, and no, we you fucking do it. Right You're the now. one who read it. That's a crazy claim. I, so crazy I'm, claims I'm require I'm, a news I, source. I, 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 well, was I wrong about judicial law? Yeah, you misstated. Find that beating because, the state of California? No, you, yeah, you pretty much misstated what the deal is. In, in, no, in the settlement, didn't it say that California would have to remove up to 1.5 million names rolls? From inactive voter rolls, voters who don't get voting materials and who aren't listed as active at their precincts. People who don't okay. show up, who don't vote because they moved away, or they're dead. The reason, the reason that they don't show up 
is so that the Democrats can send people to vote for them it and doesn't say that happen. they're them. A gazillion studies and investigations have gone on, and that shit it just doesn't happen except in the tiny. Yeah, there, there, crack. there are hundreds of thousands of votes that are being that have been stolen. Did you know? Did this you know, for just example, bullshit. that that's Orange just a County? False wait, wait, statement. listen. That's a false Rick, statement. It's a Rick, false Rick. statement. It's a Rick. pure hundred percent. Bullshit hey, lie, but, Lance. Okay, can I talk? I'm going to talk now. Don't say anything. Listen to me. We had a congressman in the Republican area of Orange County. For the viewers that don't know this, Orange County is a very conserved area. Okay? We had um, a congresswoman that had won two elections, one by 15,000 and one by 20,000. And on election day in 2018, she had won by 20,000. The Democrats managed to come up with basketfuls of votes. And she ended up losing by 5,000 weeks later, weeks after the election. What's her name? So, so don't tell me it, she was the congresswoman from Orange County. I don't remember her name. It was in 2018. People wanted to. They managed to swing. They managed to swing. Uh, they managed to swing a district that hadn't voted Democrat for decades, maybe yeah. ever, and had consistently been 20,000, 10,000, 15,000 above. And they swung the election, and they came up with votes m weeks after the election was over. Yeah, you know, fucking California gets more democratic as people get more disgusted with the, the shittiness of your party. So, yeah, because you brought three million illegal aliens into California. All right, so let's, we're going to switch topics because Jade, our, our director, um, sent me an article from the Daily Mail in England on how um, he sent me two articles this week. Um, one was from Fox News, the other was from the, from the Daily Mail. Um, and I want to talk about the, the one from the Daily Mail, which I'd seen before and read, so I'd already... Um, now, let me... It's about how L.A. has turned into a hellhole that's just solidly homeless people and how just um, everybody who's not homeless is scuttling the hell out of L.A. because it's hell now. Um, yeah, because of the Democrats. All right, so i got to start with this, that when I was working for Jimmy Kimmel, there were news sources that if, if you brought a story to him because you thought it was a topic that people that he should discuss and that the writing staff, he and the writing staff should think about how to present in an interesting and usually you know funny way. When you brought him a story, he'd say, where is it from? And... If I said it from the Daily Mail, he would get. I, I I said that a couple times, and he got really pissed at me because Jimmy's a very smart guy and a very well-informed guy, and a guy who's good at you know. Usually, when you presented him with information within a minute, he would know more than you did because he either knew more to start with, or he was able to find the pertinent information. But he knew from you know from looking at you know news sources he knew the daily mail is shit it's a tabloid it's a british tabloid and he didn't trust anything that came out of it if you want to see why you don't trust anything that came out of it then um just google the daily mail and read read one of some of their stories and see what stories are listed down the sidebar because on any given day, half the stories are on which beautiful celebrity showed their butt on the beach. Um, it's, it's not a good paper. Which doesn't mean that they can't be right about Cal L.A. being hellacious. But that story is sensationalistic. And so, I mean, what I did when I read the story, I mean, we have a lot of homeless people. We might have the most homeless people. It, of any city in the country because you know if you're gonna be homeless it's better to be homeless in LA than it is to be homeless in um, where you know where you've got 
you know, where it's cold and shit. Um, also, we have all these um, drug rehab joints, we adver which advertise nationwide, come out here to be cured of, of opioid addiction. And then you come out here, and they don't send you back. They'll cover your trip out. They won't cover your trip back. So anyway, we've got a bunch of homeless people and conditions because of COVID for L.A., among other cities, are, are shitty. Um, so what I did was, is this article right? Is Are people just fleeing L.A.? And so my wife and I, you know, we live in a nice neighborhood, and we track real estate because we you know, that's our biggest investment, and also because we're busybodies, so we'll go see the, the new homes when they have open houses in our neighborhood. Um, so I got on Zillow, and I checked to see um, what our home is worth, and is L.A. turning into this hellhole where everybody's fleeing, and not according to Zillow. According to the price of our home, it, our, the price of our home has gone up if were we to sell it. Um, and that's what our experience has been. But yeah, they, there's some fucked up shit in L.A., but it's not currently wrecking L.A. as a place for non-homeless people to live. Now, I think over time, L.A. will become more hellacious, more hellish, and the, the entertainment industry will move out of L.A., but I still think that that's 15 to 20 years in the future. And so I think the article in the Daily Mail is sensationalist bullshit. Um, and yeah, there's fucked up, I mean, there's a lot of homeless people in L.A., and there's a lot of others, but anyway, lands. All right. Um, in late July, the CDC abruptly, in late July, the CDC abruptly advised states to stop testing for H1N1, that's swine flu, and stopped counting individual cases. CBS reported in 2009. Okay. There. Proof. CBS, not a Republican station. Okay. So what was going on in now, July that the president told the CDC to stop? Because because the swine flu is a flu, we had a vaccine pretty fast. We had a vaccine within five months after um, Obama declared, I believe, in March, um, a, a, a medical emerge a national medical emergency. So I guess we had a, a vaccine. Um, I don't know if it was rolled out or if the, I don't know the whole timeline of swine flu. But I would like to know why they stopped counting individual cases. Does the article say why? In late July, the CDC abruptly advised states to stop testing for the, the H1N1 flu and stopped counting individual cases. The rationale given for the CDC guidance to forgo testing and tracking individual cases was, why waste resources testing for H1N1 flu when government has already confirmed there's an epidemic? Okay. Some public health officials privately disagreed with the decision to stop testing and counting, telling CBS News, the continued tracking of this new and possibly changing virus was important because H1N has a different epidemiology, affects younger people more than seasonal flu, and has been shown to have a higher case fatality rate than other flu virus strains. Okay. CBS, do I know you don't? You don't. On and on you don't. Because you, all right, so I'm not alive. No. So, I'm not right, so there's a possibility that the thousands of people who died of H1N1 weren't counted, but certainly not as many as okay. have died of, of the COVID. Yes. Well, it's not certain. It is fucking but certain. Let me answer your question about the old about the uh, homeless people in LA. I got off the phone with my brother who is in Salt Lake City. And he hasn't been to L.A. in about 30 years, and he asked me how it is. And uh, I said to him, well, Mark, anywhere that you go in L.A., you can get out of the car and walk through a homeless encampment 
Sometimes the encampments are 30 people. Uh, there are whole blocks that have been taken over where the homeless are in the, the hundreds. There are whole sections of downtown LA where cars can't go through, where there's um, murders and rapes, and the crime rate is spectacular. They have diseases in these homeless encampments that are now spread all over LA. Some of these diseases haven't been seen since uh, earlier in human history because they're the kinds of diseases that you get in pre-industrial area societies. You're talking cholera? Because they're, they're getting things, typhus, yeah, okay. uh, things that you get from rats because there's no hygiene anymore. And uh, I said to him, you know, the great thing about it, the Democrats, of course, have done nothing. But let me continue, just to give people that are viewing this some idea of what we're dealing with. Because there are people in states like Salt, like Utah that are run by sane people, Republicans. Now, you can go to any part of LA now. There, it's not a matter of there being some nice parts where you don't see homeless encampments. And I'm not talking about one homeless person walking down the street. They build encampments. What they do is they buy these camping tents I'm explaining this to my brother. Mm -hmm. And first you'll see one camping tent. It might be under a freeway. It might be in an alleyway. But very soon there will be dozens. And there's no place that you won't see this. I took a drive last week. I had to go through downtown L.A., Hollywood, the Valley, and everywhere I went, Santa Monica, Venice, so everywhere I went, there were encampments of homeless people, dozens up to hundreds, they appeared to be. Skid Row, for example, has expanded dramatically into many, many blocks. It's not just one block anymore. Skid Row was a place where there were nothing but homeless people, but it, it, it was usually it was about a block. It was one city block my whole life. Now it's many city blocks. And I was telling my brother, because he used to like to go to, down to Venice Beach. He's, I was saying, you know why people don't go down to Venice Beach anymore? Because the entire Venice boardwalk now is a homeless encampment. Let me tell you about these homeless people, Rick. They are mostly mentally ill, addicted to drugs and alcohol. They carry weapons. They commit tremendous violent crimes. All of these homeless encampments are lawless. Now, my brother well, was actually, shocked that's, by that's this. Not, my my right, brother that's, not, my, that's an overstatement in that no, I've, no, I've, no, I've, no I've, been through, I've been through trainings on this stuff with the cops and about a third of home, not everybody who's homeless is mentally ill. About a third of the homeless okay, are mentally ill. Okay, okay, Rick, a third of them are mentally ill. The rest are, are, I would say, addicts. Maybe two-thirds are addicts. Some of them, maybe a small percentage, are down on their luck. Yeah. And, of course, illegal aliens, which should please you as a Democrat, because you need as many illegal aliens in California as possible. So the thing is, my brother was shocked. He said, well, why doesn't the mayor or the governor do something about it? And I said, the Democrats are completely in paralysis. They haven't done a thing, nothing, zero. In fact, it was the Democrats that upheld the idea, the law, in fact, that you can sleep on the street. And since then, the Democrats have done virtually nothing. It was, of course, the Republicans that used to move people along. They used to prevent people from sleeping on the street. Except in Skid Row, which you said has been there your whole life. So Skid, Skid Row was, was one block in a city. that it had a, it had a thousand people, maybe a few hundred people on it. Now there are 60,000 homeless people. Yep. Six, zero, comma, zero, zero, zero. That's right. 60,000, all caused by the Democrats, because you won't enforce the laws. So thank you. Thank you, Rick. The city is unlivable because of Democrats. 
Well, it's not unlivable. It's got a lot of, it's got the, perhaps the most homeless in the nation. Um, and it's something What are you going to do about it, Rick? I don't know, but I mean... Yeah, to, I'll tell you what, what Republicans wanted to do. Yeah, you guys they wanted, wanted to, to make it. They, they, they wanted, wanted to make it illegal to sleep on the street, and they wanted to put people in cheap camps where they could have a roof over their head and be prevented from having alcohol and drugs. All right, so... And where they can be thing, isolated if they were mention, One thing you don't mention that's pertinent here is this homeless thing, this explosion in homeless, has happened over the past two and a half years, three years. Well, wait, you're frozen, so we should, we can't have an argument if you're just fucking frozen. I can hear you. Okay, all right. Okay, so it, it to, yeah, people don't know what to do, and various solutions are being looked at. Um, by politics, by the by, LA politicians. It's it's the biggest no, problem. No, no, you're not you're not doing a fucking thing about it, Rick. Democrats, you know, no, because Democrats it, it, have let people shit on the street in San Francisco. De the the city of San Francisco. If you walk from one side to the other, you will see people shitting in the street, and the Democrats just walk right by the shit. In downtown L.A., there was such a big outbreak of, of typhus that it managed to get into the, city, into the city hall and infect some of the Democrat councilmen with typhus, and they okay. did nothing about it. The deal, one problem is that this is a pretty fucking new problem. The explosion in homeless is two and a half, three years old, and yeah, there's... Well, there's it, was, it, started, it started under Obama. Okay, but the the number goes up by huge percentages every year, and yeah, nobody knows exactly. There are a bunch of different solutions that are being looked at. I've been. Why did the Democrats make it legal to sleep on the street, Rick? Well, for one thing, we don't have camps to to hold sixty thousand people. We probably also don't have the legal authority to to move people to camps. There yes, are, you do. You see, you be their vagrant. So, I mean, yeah, it's bad. Is it going to destroy it's LA? It's bad because of you. You're no, people fuck are you because the how shit confused is happening. you are. They can, they can hear how confused and paralyzed you are. So you don't know what name, to do. Name, you're, a name, you're a liberal that has no name, idea what to name do. Name a fucking city that had the homeless problem anywhere close to what we've had that has addressed it and take remove the homeless population name a city rick the de rick, name a rick, city that we're the democrats the democrats created this problem only people as dumb as la democrats would have created such a place fuck you know people i named the reasons people come to la we didn't make la they, a nice they were coming place. here they were coming here 50 years ago for the same reasons. But they were the Democrats in the numbers that they're coming now. And because so the Democrats the... don't put them in the pokey for sleeping on the sidewalk. So you you tell me a city that, that has had more than 10,000 homeless people and has dropped that number down to 2,000. Tell me Rick, a fucking city. Rick, Rick, I'll answer your question. No city was as dumb as as you people are, and let it happen. Only you people, Democrats from Los Angeles, are stupid enough to have let this happen. So I can't give you a city because nobody's as dumb as you are. No other city is as much a, a, a target, as a, is as much a d destination for the homeless as L.A. As I told you, yeah, L.A. has all these... No, but no one believed you. There are other people living in night cities watching this show right now that know that you're making this up, that you're a fool for saying that. All right. Well, let's move on to some other shit now that I'm a fool. I'm, it's a big problem. Well, you tried to convince people that L.A. was such a great destination. What about the people in all the other goddamn cities in the country? Why don't they have to go through this? Why didn't they? Because they fucking live in Cleveland, which doesn't have all the rehab joints we have, which isn't sunny 328 days a year. 
Why don't cities and cities have to go through this? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me the number of homeless in Dallas. Because they're run by Republicans, Rick. Republicans yeah, tell me the, would uh, never have. Republicans don't let the homeless people destroy the city. All right, so let's move and on. And by the way, I'm not done. Why, fucker? When, de when, when Democrats allow homeless people to take over swaths of the city, it doesn't get smaller. It gets worse because then the businesses in those area, in those areas have to go out of business because people can't walk through the junkies and the feces and the, and the, and the needles and the prostitutes to get to the businesses. So the really? Democrats are slowly letting cancer eat the city. Yeah, you sound like Hannity now. Where I, when I drive past homeless people, I don't see prostitutes. I don't. I, and why don't you get out of your fucking car and walk through Skid Row? Well, Skid, Skid, as you said, Skid Row's been there forever, and where it was one block. No, no, no. It never had ten thousand people like it has now, Rick. Okay. But why I'm, don't you walk through it? Why should I go to fucking Skid Skid Row's back? Well, so you can tell me where all the pro you can tell me when I drive through in my fine cult, when I drive through, I don't see the prostitutes. You think people are so stupid that they buy that argument? Why don't you get out of your fucking car and go to Skid Row and walk through it? Do you know they have flesh-eating fungus that gets right through your shoe in Skid Row? Okay. People are losing their legs. They're getting their legs amputated because of stupid Democrats voting this to allow this to happen. All right, Lance, you're an asshole. Let's move on to the next topic, which is, J.D., you sent me an article on the end of the universe, again from Fox News, which, make, which makes me, sorry, I'm not supposed to say your name, but it makes um, sorry, our nameless director um, sends me a couple articles, and it, it, you know, what's weird is my two primary go-to sources to see what's shaken besides Twitter used to be um, Huffington Post and either Slate or Salon, just to see, you know, what their takes were. They're pretty liberal or very liberal. Now my go-to sources are HuffPo and the Drudge Report. Because the Drudge Report, which used to be very, very conservative, has now just kind of given up on, on the... They, I mean, they still run plenty of, of stuff from a conservative point of view, but they're, they seem to be as exasperated with what's going on as anybody. But anyway... Um, I, I, I wonder, um, you know, I get, I've been sucked into, I'll watch Fox, I, as this, as our show has gone on and as the Trump presidency has gone on, you know, I, I watch more conservative stuff to see what you guys are saying about stuff um, and s to see whether it's legit or not. Um, and, I mean, and, and it turns out, as we've discovered, though you wouldn't, entirely agree Lance I'm not as liberal as a lot of liberals I'm I don't know probably if you looked at the whole population I'm probably probably 30 percent of America is more liberal than I am maybe 25 percent um, but anyway this was from Fox News on the end of the universe the universe is just gonna keep expanding stars are gonna burn out and after a couple trillion years, the the, uni the universe is going to experience something called heat death, which is um, its maximum entropy. Entropy equals disorder, and disorder it's disorder that you can't exploit to do any work. Like when water falls over a waterfall, um, you can capture, you can make the water turn a wheel and use that wheel to generate electricity. But if all the waterfalls eroded away and water was at the very same level every place and there were no tides, water was just flat across the whole world, there'd be no way you could get energy 
out of the motion of water because water doesn't have any kinetic energy. It's not moving. It's just sitting there. And that's the heat death of the universe, that as it gets old enough, all the stars burn out and everything turns into a, like a black, blackened cinder. And temperatures are equally distributed throughout the universe. There are no hot spots where you can take heat from like a sun and use that, that energy from the sun to do work, you know, to, to, to make plants, to, you know, to make, you know, to make solar panels work. Just the universe ends up with an even temperature across the whole thing, just lukewarm, no energy is available, and everything's just dead because there's, there's, there's nothing you can do that would power anything. And that happens in a couple trillion years. And I don't buy this. I think that there are anti-entropy processes in the universe, that the universe is an information processor. And the parts of the universe that are burned out fall away and are replaced in the active center of the universe by newly lit up stars and galaxies. The, if you look at the universe like an information processor and you look for analogies among what, what other things are information processors? Computers and brains. And if you look at brains and computers, they don't just do one calculation and then shut down. Your brain basically has a new thought you know, say you say you have th three new thoughts a second for every waking hour. So that's 10,000 thoughts an hour times 16. It's, it's over 100. It's, it's over 150,000. You know, new kind of brain landscapes, new sets of thoughts a day. You know, you um, and this goes on for decades. Um, and I would say that the processes in the universe are similar, that the universe is processing information and sharing information with itself. So every part of the universe kind of has a rough idea of the information that's been generated in every other part of the universe, the same way every part of your mind is kind of hip to you know, what's going on every part of your brain. Um, you know, if you stub your toe, you're entirely aware of it. There's not half your brain that goes on doing things oblivious, no conscious part of your brain that's oblivious to what's going on with your toe. Um, so anyway, the universe is kind of a global information processor. So I assume that the processes in the universe keep renewing themselves so it can keep having new thoughts the same way a computer can keep processing new information and our brains can keep having new thoughts. So I don't think the universe shuts down after one like explosion of information. I think it recycles like a boiling pot of water. You know, the, the, some parts of it expand and, and rise to the top and evaporate as water vapor and then but at the same time, new bubbles are forming, and it always keeps on bubbling along. Uh, the end of that. Do we have any other topics? No, I think that was a good end for our show. Okay. Sorry about all the uh, yelling, but also... That's not equally my fault. Okay. I, I, I want to do a recommendation for a book before I go. Okay. I have one, I don't too. know if you guys can see this. This is can can th is this appearing on the screen because I've lost vision. Yes. All right. It's Lifespan by David Sinclair. Uh, probably the most important book I've ever read, um, and it tells you why we age and if and how it could be stopped. Uh, this is uh, uh, Sinclair is from MIT and Harvard at their departments. He didn't just go there. He was, you know, they have departments there that study uh, the aging of the cells. 
and uh, I urge everyone to read it. It's a revolution in the making, and it will, it will, um, it might change your life. Um, um, oh yeah, well I mean yeah, his brother died. His younger brother Robert died, and yeah, I mean it's he. He didn't die of COVID. That's what Twitter was liking speculating. No, he he had some something going on. He had a brain hemorrhage, I think that was. But anyway, yeah, no. Trump said it's his his brother was his best friend, and and you know, I mean, he deserves his sympathy, our sympathy, even though he, Trump pisses me off. It, it's not for us to to be gleeful because he suffered a loss. All right, wait, I'm going to go. Okay, wait, i got a what? book to recommend, too, where um, All right. the only politician I've ever done volunteer work for is Katie Hill, who was a congresswoman from um, Southern California, and she lasted a year before her ex-husband uh, vengefully, or I don't know if he was ex, or in the middle of a divorce or something, released a bunch of nude pictures of her and like stuff about let loose a bunch of, of of information about her having an affair with one of her staffers and she was forced to resign and um, or she decided to resign and she's written a book um, about her experience called She Will Rise and I've only barely started reading it um, and I'll admit because I'm a sleazy guy I'm interested to see if it gives any of the juicy details but mostly it's about misogyny, how um, a gazillion congressmen have had sexual peccadilloes and most of them didn't have to resign after you know this level of um, of scandal that she felt forced out at least in part. What happened to her she feels was at least in part because she's a woman. Hey, I'm an elected official and if you look around on the internet. Well, there's one particular place you can look and you can see me entirely naked and nobody's forcing me to, to resign my office. Um, so anyway, um, I'll, I'll tell you more as I read more whether I, I, I recommend it but I haven't gotten to any of the good stuff yet. All right, I think not what they paid for tonight. Okay, see you. all right, goodbye, thank you. Um, if we're still rolling, you know, if you want to give us, we're not. Okay, good. Or are we? Okay, so um, if you want to give us money for this 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 exercise in misery, it's Lance vs Rick. Lance versus Rick at gmail.com is our PayPal address. And thank you for watching. Whether or not you support us, thank you extra much if you support us financially. But Thank you just for watching this stuff because, you know, sometimes it's hard to watch. Oh, okay, yeah, also, we're as it's, it's 79 days until the election, and our director, who's a very good director, um, thinks we should be going every... Well, he wanted to go twice a week, but that's just too much to do. But we're going to start going every about five days. Yeah, so um, it's Sunday, and we're going to try to do a, a new session on Thursday. And yeah, so you know, because because shit's just—I mean, it's hard to believe how shit could get any crazier, but every day it still does. Yeah, so new stuff. Um, probably we're going to get angrier. Trump's going to get squirrelier and try more shit. Um, you know, anyway. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks. Oh, thanks to Kedro, who was on um, last week. We'll try to get him back. All right. Thank you. Thanks.